Hi everyone and welcome back to my bench. Today I have something different than usual because usually my projects don't include a screen except for some few but here I have a screen that might be interesting to be used uh, in projects uh, because of its shape and because of the features that it all crams in the back. What this is, is the Crow Panel ESP32 version, 1.28 inch uh, display. Uh, so it's an IPS display with the capacitive touch on top. And it was kindly provided by Elecro to, for me to test and make a project with it. So thank you for that. On the back of the display, we have the ESP32, which powers the, the whole uh, display we have the USB-C connector from which we can directly access the ESP32 and program it based on the ID of our choice then it has a battery management circuit and a connector for a battery so we can make projects that are uh, battery powered we have a real-time clock with its battery here on the side we have a button that's accessible on the side that can be used in our sketches and in our programs and uh, we also have few other additions so we have a rotary encoder here um, we have a buzzer and a vibration motor for providing some haptic feedback we have the standard boot and reset buttons uh, here on the PCB and the antenna and that's about it in terms of shape the display is completely round but the pcb has this uh, extrusion i'm not sure how to call it this protruding part which is even slightly larger than the display and the pcb is not completely round so i'm guessing that they had to do that so the flat cable of the display could be managed uh, and connected to the board but i think that this uh, might be an issue if you want to put this in an enclosure you'll need to account for that and it would have been a lot nicer if it if this is just a round pcb now i haven't added any code of my own on the display yet on the device so i'm gonna power it as it came from from the box you'll see we get this nice uh animation from electro and we immediately uh, get a watch face uh, that we can interact with so there is a second screen and also another watch face that we can go over uh, this is uh, some sort of a demo that is already on the watch so we we have toggles that we can interact with so some drop downs and the two watch faces that are provided by default now as is the display is really usable and comes quite handy and uh, based on the shape and the provided examples the main purpose of it i think is to be used with custom wearable and custom smartwatches that people can build around it so maybe a chassis with the bell that you can wear on your hand and it can probably also be used in projects where you need some sort of gauge uh, where you need to display some sort of information and if we jump to the product page on the web we can immediately see that uh, this is uh, intended to be used with some sort of fitness and personal trackers where even the examples are showing some bits per minute, the time, steps, and different watch faces. If we go down below, we have some demos, some UI demos uh, that uh, we can interact with, some examples, and this is all available in code that you can try and test with. Now, as is, the display is quite versatile and can be useful in a lot of projects, but one thing that I didn't realize until I got my hands on it and I started thinking about what I could do is that, that we don't really have any exposed IO pins that we can use ourselves. So we are kind of limited to using what's already on the board. And as I said before, that's the vibration motor, the buzzer, rotor encoder and the push button. So there is no I square C that we can connect to and add our own sensors. If you've been following my channel, you'll probably recognize what this is. This is the monitor that I did for my living room uh, that I'm using with the Home Assistant to measure 
temperature and humidity. Uh, you could check out the video up here in the corner. And the initial idea was that I'm gonna remove this and redo this where the crow panel will be the controller that controls this instead of using the ESP8266 as I did before. But then I realized that I have no way of adding this temperature and humidity sensor to the board. So the plan, like um, the next step, the alternative is to this to remain as is and report data to Home Assistant, uh, which it currently does. And this could be just the display where we can have the temperature and the humidity displayed here. And maybe we can even try to make this uh, two way if there's interest in it and we have time where we can probably control a relay or something. So this can be the thermostat, for example, and this could be just the control that we can have separate and place somewhere else. Now to home assistant. Four to six weeks later. And welcome back to my desk. Since the last clip that you saw previously, it's been almost a month uh, with all the Christmas and New Year holidays. Uh, I kind of had the project on the back burner. And uh, additionally, I faced some issues running the provided examples. But as the people from Electro gladly helped, the problem was that I was using and updated versions of the ESP32 ports as well as the libraries that they provide. Uh, apparently, uh, the display and the functionality is still not uh, yet ported to it, but hopefully will be soon. I'll have links down in the video description to the exact versions of the code and libraries that I used to make it work. The example that I built has a meter on the outside. It uses LVGL to all of the graphics. And this is my first time working with LVGL and it uh, seems interesting for future projects. We have one meter that goes from minus 20 to 60 to display the temperature where few of the ranges are color coded differently. So minus 20 to zero is color coded blue, 10 to 30 is color coded green, and then 40 to 60 is color coded uh, red. This is customizable. You can change the ranges and the display and how often you have the marks pretty easily, I would say. It just requires some knowledge of LVGL, which is beyond the purpose of this demonstration. And in the center, I have a label that displays the current temperature and humidity as measured from the monitor that you saw before. Just for fun, I have my logo there at the bottom, uh, just to show you that it's fully customizable and you can add whatever you want. Now, let's jump to Home Assistant to show you how you can send the data to it. And then uh, we'll quickly go through the code to see how to integrate the display. But I'll have all of the code available on the written article that is linked down in the video description. Now, the demo uses MQTT to receive the data from Home Assistant. And because the sensor is built on top of ESP Home, we can go to the ESP Home configuration and this is what we had before. So we are using a DHT sensor connected to pin D0 and we have two values, uh, two sensors. So one for the temperature and one for the humidity where we have a distinct name and we choose to update every 60 seconds. Uh, what I added is the MQTT configuration where I added the broker IP, uh, which is the same as Home Assistant, as well as the username and password coming in from the secrets file and then the topic prefix, which is home slash living room sensor. This will connect the sensor to home assistant and to be able to send that state change. Uh, once we detect a different temperature, we are adding this uh, command here. So state topic, this is the where the publish will happen once we have new temperature and also once we have a new humidity. Now on the Arduino side of things, we have the includes at the beginning and we have LVGL and Lovian GFX to interact with the display. We have the I2C as well as the secrets file where I'm storing the values for the Wi-Fi and MQTT network ID and passwords. Uh, what's 
uh, really important here to note is that we need to figure out uh, what are the topics that we are connecting to. And this is one of the topics that was provided by the example. I'm going to show you that later on that we can also send additional data from uh, Home Assistant to the device. We have the initial setting of variables, the class to uh, work with the display and it's and it's touch screen so i won't go into any details into that because i just use them from the provided examples then we have the functions to connect to wi-fi mqtt once we are connected to mqtt we need to subscribe to the topics that we want to listen on and this in our case those are the temperature topic and the humidity topic as well as the example topic that uh, is connected to a switch in the home assistant then the important thing is that when we get a make mqtt message we need to figure out what the topic is and if the topic is the one for the temperature then we set the current variable uh, the current temperature variable with what we received from the state as well as setting up the uh, meter value and similarly to the humidity if we receive a topic that relates to the humidity we set the current humidity to that value and then we update the data label that's in the center we have some additional things that can be triggered on the um, vibration motor from the example i'm gonna skip that and also i'm gonna skip the this is the map for the image i show at the bottom and what i want to show you is the function that uh, generates the meter as you can see it's called uh, example meter one and it's uh, based on the examples provided from lvgl where we have a scale ranging from minus 20 to 60 that spans 270 degrees across and it's 135 degrees rotated so it shows nicely. We have the different um, scales, so the different arcs, the, the one for the blue, green, and red. We have the needle that displays uh, the current temperature. And we have the circular background, the label, as well as some other styles. So I can make it uh, look as it does. In the setup function, um, we just have the usual things so we are setting up wi-fi and mqtt we make sure to connect to wi-fi once we connect to wi-fi we make sure to connect to mqtt as well and in it the display and um, everything else related to the display again this is uh, all coming in from the example the difference here is adding the function that draws uh, what we want after everything is set so and in the loop there is nothing other than making sure that we have the lvgl handler with certain delay so everything happens and it's redrawn as soon as we update the um, values while testing this i had a um, function to set a random value so a new random value was generated and being sent to the variables to update the needle and also update the label in uh, in the center now the example that i show you just updates and display values that are sent from home assistant but if we want to physically control some of the other features on the display like the vibration motor that it has uh, we need to come and add additional switch to the configuration of home assistant where i just simply named it button and i use the state when the switch is on and off and here on the test dashboard that i have uh, this is where i've added that button to that entity now when i turn this on um, i don't know if you can hear that or not let me try and bring it close to the microphone i might agree regret this but you can hear that the vibration motor is now on and it now turned off i don't know so you could see as i turn it on it starts to move because of the vibration in the code this is um 
controlled simply by setting a pin and because of how the device is wired up we need to use a special function that we have defined here hold on yeah so here is the function that talks with the i square c of the device uh, to set the specific pin and again this is provided by the example and with that i'm gonna end the video right here this is a really nice and interesting display that i think can have many purposes and uses within home assistant and within smart home setup so you can have different gauges in different position since this has touch you could also use this um, it's not currently implemented where you could set a desired temperature in uh, uh, the room that you have it i would have loved to have some sort of io pins that i can access and connect to on the device so that i could add the temperature sensor uh, locally on the device and use that to send it to home assistant maybe in a future version i based on the examples and everything i saw on the display this is mostly intended to be used with uh, smart watches but i think it can have other interesting uses as well all of the resources for the display and the code that i use will be linked down in the video description as well as links on where you can get the display I want to thank Electro for providing the display. And if you have any ideas what else we can do with the display, make sure to leave them down in the video comments. Also, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the future videos. And I will see you all in the next one. Cheers.